Hey guys, it's Q&A time again. Do remember that if you want to ask me anything at all to follow me on Instagram, every Monday I do a Q&A on my Instagram story. I've had a real variety of questions this week. Um, a few fitness related, some sort of life related questions, a few suspect questions. Um, so I'll be answering sort of the top four or five that I think are the most interesting questions and the most sort of useful for you guys. So the first question is, is it possible to get fit without using a gym? Absolutely, 100% yes, of course. Um, there is so much more that you can do to improve your fitness rather than training in a, in a gym. Uh, you can run outside, you can walk outside, you can play sports with your friends. Anything that gets your heart rate up and keeps you moving around is going to get you fitter. Um, if you don't really enjoy going to a gym or you're a bit intimidated by a gym, I do run eight week home workout programs. Um, where you'll be popped into a support group, you'll be sent your programming weekly um, and kind of given a, a target on calories, there's a little bit of nutrition support as well and you absolutely can get fit either from home, outdoors, with your friends, you don't need to have a gym membership in order so to I get asked fit. this question all the time. What is the best exercise for shredding fat? The truth of it is there is no one exercise that is going to be the best at losing body fat. Losing body fat is a culmination of cutting down on your calories, increasing your non-exercise movement, and yeah, increasing your, um, your high intensity movement or weight training. Um, the first thing to do if you're hoping to try and lose some body fat is to get yourself into a calorie deficit. Calorie deficit is a real buzzword and you've probably heard it loads of times. What that means in simple terms is that the fuel that you're putting into your body, so food and drinks, um, the energy levels, so the calories are lower than what you're burning. So if you're burning more than you're putting in, you're, you're going to lose fat. So I would firstly, if you're trying to burn fat, make sure that your food is on point and then start bringing in high intensity sort of interval training or um, just increase how much you're moving around outside of the times you spend in the gym. Ah, oh, that's a really sweet question. Um, I'm not always super positive. We all have down days. Um, we all have times where we feel overwhelmed or kind of not happy with the way our lives are. Um, I think naturally I am just quite a happy, positive person, but then I have, you know, a really happy life. Um, I do a job I love. I've got a healthy child. I've got loads and loads of really positive friends that kind of keep me balanced when I go a little bit crazy. Um, we have a nice home. So yeah, I think in terms of staying positive, I just try and remind myself of everything that I have um, and everything that lots of people don't have. Um, I rely really, really heavily on my support network, really great family support. I've got absolutely amazing friends. Um, so yeah, but I'm glad that I come across positive. I don't know if all my like super close friends would say the same, but I do try. Okay, that's an interesting one. Um, do I think that fitness can cause depression? Um, I don't think fitness can cause depression. I think fitness um, or trying to hit certain fitness targets can put a lot of pressure on a person. Um, I think the unrealistic expectation that we have that we should look a certain way, that our bum should be shaped a certain way, um, and that everybody else who is trying to attain these fitness goals is far surpassing what we're achieving can be a causal factor in um, low self-esteem and feeling like you're not really good enough and obviously like that can cause sort of depressive episodes. I don't think that fitness as a whole causes depression. I think that um, working out and getting fitter and getting healthier is always a positive thing. I think we put pressure on ourselves to achieve very, very quickly and we don't take into account how long it can take to get fit and strong and healthy. Um, but I don't think that it causes depression. I think that we cause ourselves to beat ourselves up because we don't think that we're achieving as quickly or as productively as we should be, rather than just seeing fitness as a lifestyle and something that we are trying to bring in to enhance our lives. Um, in terms of having an end goal, I mean, we're never gonna have an end goal. I'm never gonna have, wake up one day and say, do you know what, I've hit my fitness goals. I love my body, it's perfect, it's exactly how I want it. I love how strong I am and this is perfect and it's, you know, I don't need to any more from my fitness. I don't think that's realistic. Um, I think we should have small goals that we try and achieve that are non-scale related. So getting a pull up or getting a hundred kilo deadlift, 
um, that we can keep hitting these small targets. But realistically, like, yes, maybe train for a marathon or train for a competition so that you have an, a sort of end goal, but it's never going to be an end goal. Fitness or working out or training or running around outside and keeping healthy is not an end goal. It's a lifestyle choice. So yeah, hopefully that answers that question. Um, if you are struggling or feeling like you're feeling depressed, whether it's relating to your training or kind of your progress, then do seek help because um, although personal trainers are there to support you and they are there to um, try and help you hit these goals, we are not trained psychological professionals. I do have a psychology degree, but that doesn't mean that I am trained to help you deal with depressive episodes. That really is something that you need to see your doctor about. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, in the fitness, um, as fitness professionals, we can support you to a degree, but we can't support you anywhere beyond kind of helping you with. Again, this is a really popular question about staying motivated. Um, okay, so I've got probably four top tips for staying motivated. Um, first one is booking out your training into your calendar. So when you make your training a priority, the same as you would as a doctor appointment or a dentist appointment um, or booking a client in, then it is in your diary. It is a set thing that you have to achieve and it kind of gets you in that mindset that this is an important appointment and I can't miss it. So yeah, block out your diary. It's something that I do myself because otherwise I will just put clients in and I'll put all of Theo's stuff in and I haven't blocked out time that's specifically for my training and it can definitely affect it. So yeah, block. The next tip would be um, have sh short time goals that you're trying to achieve. So maybe, um, I don't know, dropping a dress size or being able to run 5k and um, keep these as like motivational short time goals that you can try and achieve rather than just kind of looking for an end goal because you can get a bit boring feeling like you're not really achieving that much but when you're achieving very small goals they all add up to a bigger goal and they make you feel more motivated would be um, finding something within the fitness industry that you actually enjoy so just because Instagram says that you should go in and lift weights um, and do hip thrusts and glute bridges doesn't mean that necessarily is for you. Um, some people love running. Some people love um, playing netball or playing outdoor sports. Some people love weight training. So find something within the fitness industry that you enjoy, because if you enjoy it, it's not going to be a chore. You won't need to stay motivated because you want to do it because you enjoy it. So for me, I hate cardio, I hate hip training, I hate anything like that, it's just not my style of training. I like to weight train, so that's something that I'll always do, and I'll make sure that I hit intensity within my weight training so that I achieve the goals that I'm after. So if you want to get fitter, but you don't want to run on a treadmill indoors, you think it's boring, go and run outside, go and join a team sport, go and do something that you enjoy, otherwise your motivation is going to fall, you're going to find it boring, you're not going to want to do my last tip would be to, if you can, try and train with a friend. So um, if you're feeling demotivated, then they can send you a little text saying, come on, we're going to the gym. And then you'll be like, oh, I don't really want to. And they will put that pressure on you to go. Um, you don't even necessarily have to train with them. Just try and train at the same time or try and motivate each other to go. And kind of sometimes having external motivation can keep you on track rather than having to permanently push yourself. Um, that's why I set up these like support groups because I think that they are really super motivating um, because you can send a message like, oh, I don't really fancy doing the workout today. And then you'll have five other girls that are saying, come on, go and do the workout, go and feel good after because we always do feel so much better after we train. Um, so yeah, if you want to be part of a support group, then just send me a message um, and I can pop you into one of them and it'll be some like-minded women that can help you so that's the end of question time today. Um, I hope that some of the information has been helpful. Um, if you do want to ask me anything yourself, then pop over to my Instagram, the link's below. Um, if it's fitness related, life related, being a mum related, running a business, um, I don't think I know anything about anything else. So yeah, that's probably about it. Um, but yeah, I will check in with you guys next Monday.